In today's GIMP tutorial, we're going to take this image and transform it by adding an outline glow. How cool is that? So if you're ready to get started, let's do it. Now, if you want to follow along, this image can be found in the description below. And to create this effect, it only takes three easy steps. So let's go ahead and get started with step one, which is going to be darkening up the image, making a selection and converting it to a mask, and then creating the initial outline. So I find the image overall to be lacking in contrast and it's a little bit too bright. So I want to darken it up just a little bit. So let's go up to colors and select curves. And I'm going to create a little S curve here to add some contrast in the highlights and the shadows. So right about there looks pretty good. Now we need to make a selection of our outfit. You can use any selection tool that you want to use, whichever one is easiest for you. My recommendation for this one is either the foreground select tool or the scissors select tool. Now, if you're not sure how to use those tools, I have tutorials on how to use both of them in the description below. So go ahead and check out those tutorials so you know how to make a selection because I don't want to go into great detail about those tools right now. Otherwise, we would be here all day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to go to my original edit here or my final edit. And I'm going to click and drag this layer over to this document so I can add my layer mask this way. Now, in order to create your layer mask, once you have your selection, you want to go into the layer mask icon here and make sure you have selection selected when you add the mask. That way it adds the mask accordingly based on that selection. All right, now let's make the initial outline by coming up to the layer here, right clicking on it and choosing mask to selection, which creates the selection around the mask. I'm going to convert that to a path by going to select and clicking on to path. And then under edit, we are going to stroke the path. Now, the reason why I didn't stroke the selection is because when you stroke a selection, the edges of that stroke are pixelated and are not as smooth as with stroke with path. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to set the line width to 12. And also, I want to make sure I have the correct foreground color here selected. And I'm going to use this hexadecimal number right here if you want to use the same color. So go ahead and type that in. Click OK and then stroke. Now, I forgot to do an important step before adding the stroke to the path, and that is creating a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here. I'm going to call it outline and make sure you have it set to transparency. Now we can add that stroke to the path and there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and deselect by going to select and selecting none or using the keyboard shortcut right here, which is shift plus control plus A. All right, so there's one more thing we need to do before we move on to step two, and that is remove this outline down here. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool, which is shift plus E if you want to use your keyboard shortcut. And then I'm going to increase the size here and I'm going to go ahead and erase it from down here because I don't want that outline or any glowing effects to happen right here. All right. So step two is going to involve duplicating our outline multiple times, adding some blur and changing the blending modes. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer by clicking right here. And I'm going to call this outline blur one. Let's go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to double click right here. I'm going to type in the number five, click the tab key and click OK. Now I want to actually reduce the amount of blur but darken up the outline below it. And we can do that by changing the blending mode from normal to linear burn. So you're going to notice that outline is much darker than it was before. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer again. I'm going to call this blur two. And this time under Gaussian blur, I'm going to set it to 15. Now we're not really seeing the glow effect because of the blending mode. So let's go ahead and change that from linear burn to hard light. And that creates more of a glow. But I actually want to change the color of the glow a little bit. It's too yellow and I want to change it so it's more on the red to orange side. So let's go up to colors and select 
hue saturation and I'm going to adjust the hue to around minus 25 to get the color that I want. So you can definitely see that's much closer to the orange of her outfit versus the yellow of the outline, which is what I want. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer one more time. Let's call it Blur 3. Back to Gaussian Blur one more time. And this time I'm going to go with 40 to create a fairly large glow. Go ahead and click OK. Now that our initial outline and glow are done, step three involves creating highlights around our subject and her outfit to add some depth. And because of that outline, there should be some highlights around different parts of her body, her face, arms, and her outfit because of that glow. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start off by not forgetting to create a new layer this time. I'm going to call it Highlight. Let's go ahead and click OK. I'm going to grab my brush tool with the letter P. And then for the opacity of the brush, I'm going to set this to right around 50. Hardness, I'm going to set this all the way down to zero so I have a very soft edged brush. I also want to change the opacity of this layer down to around 50 as well. And we need to change the blending mode from normal to addition. And the last thing we need to do is we need to pick out a color for the highlights. So I'm going to go with this reddish color right here. So here's the hexadecimal number if you want to use the same color. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in with my zoom tool here. And I need to go back to my brush. So I'm going to press the letter P. And I'm going to resize my brush smaller. And I'm going to start off in her eyes here because there should be some highlights in her eyes since the eyes are fairly reflective. Now, when you start adding your highlights around different parts of the image here, it may not be perfect once you apply it. And you may need to make adjustments later on once you're done adding all your highlights. Now, you can always undo something with Command or Control plus the letter Z if you don't want to continue with what you just created, which I just did a couple of times. I'm going to go with a larger brush here. And I'm going to add a little bit more highlight down here since this lip is closer to this outline or this glowing area here versus the top lip. Now I need to come in with a larger brush and start painting along the edge of the outline around her skin right here and along her outfit as well. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to show you how to fix your outline or your highlight, I should say, in case you're not getting what you want. So for example, I'm going to go with a fairly large brush right here. And this is not going to look good at all. This looks pretty horrible. But we're going to fix that in just a second. I'm just going to go around the image real quick and add some additional highlights to kind of show you where I would put the highlights. And then you can decide for yourself where you want to put highlights on your final edit. So I'm basically just going to try and follow the creases and the different highlights and the clothing and just add a little bit more highlights in those areas to make them a little brighter than what they are right now. So that's pretty much the gist of adding highlights to your image. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few more here and then I'll show you how to fix this up and we'll go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. Now, the other thing I'm doing that you're probably noticing is I'm navigating around the image while zoomed in and still using my brush tool here. And I'm doing that by holding down my space bar and then I get the move tool, which will allow me to navigate around the image, which is nice and convenient versus trying to zoom out or using these scroll bars on the edge here. So basically, I would go around the edge here and I would spend a little bit more time in the creases and the folds and adding more highlights in here. And I'm doing a pretty rough job right now. And I just want to show you real quick how I would then go ahead and clean this up so we can fix that highlight on her cheek and her chin right here. So we're going to do that by coming over here and adding a white layer mask. And then over here, we want to make sure we're painting with black because black is going to remove. And then I can go ahead and shape that highlight to create a more uniform type of highlight. 
That way it's not as thick as it is right now. I'm going to actually bring my opacity up for this just to speed it up a little bit. And I just want to shape this around her chin here so it's not as thick as it was before. And then just kind of taper it off at the end. So something like that. And then you can go in with your black tool as well in other areas of the image where you maybe added too much highlight. I kind of want to get it out of this area here where it's really dark. So it just kind of blends in a little bit more and it's not as obvious. So this one right here as well. All right, now that you know how to create this special effect in GIMP, make sure to check out that playlist to your right to continue elevating your GIMP editing skills.